All right, sweet. So um, what we're going to be making today is a um, kind of like a to-do list, but it's going to be game focused to where we can create a, um, a collection of games and create games for that collection. And um, included in for the game is like a title, a system, a rating, a genre, a cost, and the ability to either like complete or not, as you see here, this toggles. And if you click X, it will delete the one that you actually click on, so that particular game. And of course, we've got like some forms that you fill out. We've got a drop down here uh, that works. All this stuff fills out, you know. And you can submit. I don't think it will submit now because I actually don't have it um, running. But Oh, sweet, it still submits because it's still, I guess, running in the local. Um, but yeah, as you see here, um, that all submits. And also, if you toggle complete, and <clears throat> there's more than one that you actually want to get rid of instead of just clicking X, um, I have a button down here that will completely clear out every toggled game. So, see there, good. And of course, we're not going to get anything now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, get this going and set up. So I'm going to get my terminal over here. Um, as you see, uh, let's see. Let's see. Well, actually, uh, I'm going to create a React app here in this React game collection folder that I'm in. Uh, so let's see, let's create React app. And let's just call this Game 2 app. The first one was um, when I did it on my branch. That's got all the solution code, so we won't touch that one. And it'll be good for you all to see this like entire creation process that I go through with this. Um, we won't have any um, dependencies or anything like that to install. We're not making any Axios calls. Um, we're not working with any like special library or anything like that. So um, there's really nothing major here other than like what comes standard in the Create React app. Um, we won't have to do anything special. As soon as this is done, we will get started. Um, while we're waiting, uh, this is slowly but surely getting done. Um, how did you all feel about today's material? Um, did you all feel pretty comfortable with it? Did it make sense? I feel like parts of it make a lot of sense, and then other parts I can't understand at all. Okay. Uh, what specifically uh, isn't making sense with you? Um, I would say like, if I got a pencil and a piece of paper and you told me to write out the actual order in which things are happening, I couldn't do that. Okay. But when I have it on the screen, 
I feel like I know what's communicating with what. I just don't know the order. Okay. All right, so I, I definitely think um, that might lean towards, um, I guess, an exposure issue in that just getting comfortable with doing this stuff will allow you to later like visualize it without the code there and present, if that makes sense. So like you'll eventually progress to the point where like you aren't being told what to create, um, but rather you're able to visualize what you need to create. And then you can work off that, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to visualize in my head, you know, like step one, two, three, four, from the code point of view, like what's happening. Okay, um, so I can show my notes up to the camera real quick um, on what I wrote earlier when I first um, started out with this. I had no idea like what this app was going to be or look like or anything like that. Um, and I just started thinking like, how could I relay a form um, with like a to-do list-esque style app where like we're adding something, we can delete it, and um, if need be, which I didn't add the functionality in this, we can maybe edit it, um, which I guess in a way we kind of have an edit with the toggle complete, but don't really count, you know, like we're not editing the actual data in it. Um, but let's see here. You see this? So, like, I just wrote out, like, the basic object structure at first, like, an idea of what I actually wanted presented on the screen. Um, and at that point, everything else was just, like, code. Like, once I had that basic little structure of what I needed, like, and what it needed to look like, um, the rest of this stuff just falls hand in hand with that. So, that's usually how I start. I'll take, like, a couple notes of just... I guess what I need the structure to be of like whatever data I'm playing with um, and typically it will look like an object you know or like an array of objects or you know just what have you so um, we'll definitely touch base like as we're designing this too like I'll write some notes down of like my thought processes and how I try to uh, approach this kind of stuff and um, <clears throat> maybe you'll get some good value out of that and let's see, we are almost not slowly but surely. All right. Finally. Okay, sweet. So now that we've got um, this game two app, if you'll notice in our little Git bash here, we're not actually on that file path. So anytime, like, if you download, like, a React app or something from GitHub, and you notice with this file structure here, right? Like, if you'll notice, you always want to go to the root of your directory to um, actually start this stuff. And the root here, you would think, would normally be this folder here. But because this package JSON is in here before the source file, this ends up being the root that we're actually going to want to work off of. Um, I've noticed that before with a few of you all, um, that sometimes um, just that confusion is there and present. So for anyone who was ever confused about that, like that's why sometimes like you have to CD a level deeper. And it's just because the way create React apps work with GitHub and creating repositories, like I first had to create this repo, then download it locally then create my React app, and now I have to CD into the React app folder here, and then npm start. Um, there's some tutorials out on the web as well for like how you can do this directly from like your command line and push straight up to GitHub and start a repo, but um, that's outside the, this scope of what we're doing here, so. Um, uh, that's its own process and tutorial in itself, so we'll deal with that in another time. Um, let me get rid of my annotation tools here. Uh, so yeah, we're going to need to CD into this game to app folder, and we don't need to install anything, so I don't need to like npm install or 
or anything like that. Um, if you were downloading this, like if you took this project from my GitHub and downloaded it yourself, you would have to npm install just because these dependencies aren't installed natively in your system. Um, but where I've created the React app locally, I don't have to npm install. I can straight away npm start. And as we see here, we've got our blank slate for um, our actual app. This is just the default create React app. So we're not going to need that terminal anymore for a while. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started in this. I'm going to need my app.js, my app.css. We're not really going to deal with any of these other folders. Um, they just come default with React. Um, if you were doing this and wanted to clean up, like get rid of this stuff and like your logo, you could. But we're just going to leave them there and not go through the uh, hassle of cleaning that up especially because we won't even touch it anyways. But I will go ahead and start um, cleaning up some of this stuff. I, I know I'm not gonna need any of that. I know I'm not gonna need any of this. And I'm just gonna put a high here, just so we can see that. As you see here, we now have that component rendered out and we're saying hi. Um, however, if we go up to here, Um, yes, I am recording uh, the Zoom. I'm sorry you're having some internet troubles, Ron. Um, let me go back to this. So back to this video. Oh, well. um, this video, as we can see, we need a, um, a little list here for all this stuff to actually start displaying and a form and a clear button. Um, I'm not going to make the form just yet. We're gonna take this one step at a time. So, first off, I know I'm gonna need some state eventually. And so I'm gonna go ahead and import that. And we'll eventually need some components in here, but I'm not yet gonna import them, A, because we haven't yet um, made them or anything like that. And you all probably I guess I just want to come to the need to create the component before I actually just put it in here um, so I'm gonna write a couple comments we're gonna to need to set up uh, to set up a state uh, for a initial game list okay um, we'll probably need a couple of handler functions to uh, deal with this uh, let's see I think that we'll probably need a handler function to add a game to the list of games, which is this state up here. Um, we'll need a, we need to uh, toggle whether or not something's been completed, right? So we'll need a handler function to toggle that. We'll need a handler function, I think, that will clear games um, that are already completed. So that clear button that took off all of the games that were completed. Um, and we'll also need a handler function that will clear a single game um, that is X. Um, and what I mean by X is we'll have a button with like an X on it that you can click. So that's what I mean by that. And here is where we will actually return a, well actually all this stuff, I'm so sorry. All these comments here actually need to go, not in the app, but before this return statement. Because here I was gonna say, we're gonna actually return the list of games and generate a game component for each one in the list. Of games. Okay, so we've taken a couple of notes here, and these will not necessarily be done in like top to bottom order. Like, I won't do this one, then this one, then this one. We might move around a little bit. Um, that's totally okay. Um, it'll all kind of come together. So, um, we're first going to make our state for this game list. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so we want some games, right? 
and we want to be able to set games. So anytime like we need to change what this is, uh, that's why we need a state for that. And I'm going to set this initially as an array so I can map over it. And this array is going to be comprised of objects, right? And I think just for um, example's sake, I'm only going to put two in here. But you could, of course, seed this with like how much ever default data like you actually wanted. And remember, we want to make some um, that's a list of games. And with this, I need a name, a system. So like what system is it actually played on, whether that's PC or Xbox or PS4 or whatever. We need um, a rating for the game. Um, so we know like it's ESRB. Um, the type of genre as well, like whether it's an action game or a shooter or a strategy game, that's pretty important. So I think that's a good category for this. Um, we actually need the cost as well, um, just so we can kind of keep track of what games like we're buying and like how much they are and what that amount's gonna be. Um, we also need a way to track whether or not it's completed. And that can be done simply with a Boolean. So um, we're gonna go ahead and put some of this data in here. And I'm sorry about that. All right, so we got our system here. We got our, let's say this is on PC, and this is going to be rated mature. And this is a genre. This is a strategy game. For those that know about Total War, it's one of my favorite series. Heavy into strategy games like that. Um, and whether or not it's completed. So this is that Boolean, and we're normally going to default it to false um, because normally it's not completed like when you first add it, right? So like it should be false initially. Um, and when you toggle it, that's when it will become true. And I'm just going to be able to copy and paste this. I'm going to change this. So this is another one in the series. This is all similar. Came before that game, so it's probably a little bit cheaper. And I think I think that's a good start for our games. And at any point, like if we wanted to actually see what this is, we can console log it, of course. And we can go here, refresh. I'm gonna, oh, I should probably just say hi. Just, just so that I know that that's actually rendering and I don't stay confused. We can inspect this and go to our console. And as we see here, we actually have the list and we've got the two objects, all the appropriate data, all that good stuff. So um, we're good here. Uh, we've actually got our initial state set up. Um, let's see here, we can add a new game. Um, probably not gonna do that yet. That's gonna uh, deal a bit with the forms. Uh, first, I actually wanna focus on getting um, this list actually rendered out. Uh, so that's why I said we may not do these handler functions in order, but rather when the need arises. Um, but with this though, um, I will need a few of these made. I'll, I'll need to be able to um, complete the game. So I, I'll need to have the ability to toggle and I'll need to um, have the ability to remove the game lights to exit out. So these functions, I will go ahead and start first, like let's say step two and step three. And we'll call this step one. Okay, so with this handler function here to uh, clear the games, right, that are already completed, we can solve this with a simple filter. So we're gonna create a function We'll call this clear games. And it's gonna take a parameter, the event, right? And what this parameter is going to do, um, it's actually not really gonna do anything. We can even leave that blank if you felt froggy enough. I'm just gonna keep that there. Because really, we're not really working with like that event, but rather we're creating a brand new array. Because remember, filter creates a brand new array, right? And we're filtering over this games. And if we look up here, of course, that's the state right here. This is this array of objects. 
So that's what we're filtering over. And what we're filtering is whether or not a game is completed, right? So if it's not is completed, I if it's not false, then we're going to filter that out, right? And at that point, with this new array that we have with the completed items filtered out, we're going to reset what this state is with set games, and we're going to set it to this new filter array, right? So this is going to be the filtered objects that are already completed. We're going to take those out. And so we've got that. And let's go ahead and now make a function, and we'll call this remove game. And this is going to take a parameter, an index. And remember, our index is that how we can kind of figure out our positioning, right? That's the position of whatever element in the array or what have you is in. Um, so we're going to now make a variable, and we'll call this new games. And what this new games needs to have is we're going to copy this games array. But, and the reason we're going to copy is because we don't want to modify it originally, the games array. We just want to make a copy of it that we can modify. So we want to modify the copy, not the actual games use state. And so we're going to set this equal to the spread of games. And what this is going to do if we remove a singular game, if we know this index value, right, which is that position of the element, then we should be able to take that element out based on its position, right? And we can achieve this through multiple, you know, there's multiple methods that JavaScript have to um, modify arrays. There's push, pop, slice, splice, um, unshift, shift, uh, quite a number of them. But the one that we really need in this case is splice. And splice is used for when you, it's not necessarily the first or the last element in the array, but rather you want to specifically reference like the position that it's in and how many times, like how many values it's actually taking out. Um, so in this case, the index is where we want to splice it, right? And we only want to take out one element, right? And move forward one time. So we're, all we're really doing with this new games.spice is taking out whatever element this index value is, right? And now that we've got that, we can set our games, which is this original state, right? To whatever this new games, i.e. the spliced array is. So that will give us an updated version with just the one item that we've exited out, taken out. And that's, well, that's exactly what we're wanting here. Um, so now that we've got this, we can actually think about generating this list and getting it displayed onto the um, browser so we can actually have something to see and visualize. So as you see here, all we have is high, but what we really want is to, Let's see, first I want to create a div, and let's just call this games. This is basically um, just like before, like with the Pokédex and several other projects. Um, you had the cards box and then the individual card. Well, this is going to be the games box with the individual games, right? So now that we've got this, we're going to map over this games array that we have the state, right? And we're going to have a parameter here. We're going to have the game and the index, right? That's the optional query parameter in a map. You can track index position values that way. Uh, that'll save you a whole bunch of time. Um, and we're going to return a game component, right? Now, this game component, we're going to want to pass several things down as props to it so we can work with that data in this new component. Um, that's up here. We need to pass these functions down as well as um, the actual state here. So, um, all right. 
So let's see, we want to give it, um, each child should have a unique key prop, right? So we'll give that the same index value. We'll pass index down as well, as not only the key, but we'll also pass index down as index. So we can access that. And we'll also need to complete in. So, complete. Totally forgot a step. Step four. Well, actually, this should be step four, and this should be rather step two. All right, because this won't need to be passed down as props. Um, the reason being is we'll actually throw it down here after this and be able to clear it that way. Um, so before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm also going to make this handler function to a um, so I can actually toggle whether or not the game's complete right. So complete game, right? So this is whether or not it's completed. And we're gonna have an index here, much the same as this remove game, because that index is how we track that specific game we're looking to actually toggle, right? So much the same as uh, the remove game function with the new games, we're gonna create a copy of the games. And what we're gonna do with this is we need to change this specific index new games, like this specific positional value. And we need to check its positional values is completed value, right? So whichever position we're in, in this new copy array, right, that we've spread from here, whichever index or whichever position this object's in, right, we're checking for this value here for that particular index position. And we need to change it to whatever it's not. Now, normally you could change this to true, but you would run into a problem with this to where if you changed it to true in this function, anytime you clicked the completed toggle, it would toggle that is completed to true. It wouldn't make it the opposite. So you could only toggle it once. You could never toggle it back because it would always toggle it true. So that's why you don't want it to be just the opposite automatically. You wanna tell it to be what it's not. So even when it's true, if you toggle it again, we can switch it back to false. We don't always want to just toggle it true. So we're going to get that game's index position value, right? So I can get that. And we want that particular index position's value is completed value. And we want to turn it into what it's not. So we're going to get the opposite here. Because not false is true, and not true is false by default logic. Okay, and just so you can maybe see that, we'll console that. And now that we have this spread, and we've changed whichever index that we've toggled to the right completed value here, we're gonna reset what our game state is with this new spread, right? Okay, so now that we've got that, I can move back down to here. Okay, so now that we've got this, we need a way to um, check if it's complete, right? We need a way to toggle that. And we also need a way to remove um, a particular game. And we'll set that to the same. All right, so I think that we got that done. We'll save it. Of course, we're gonna hit an error. And that's because it's not defined. We haven't made this component yet. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna import game. 
And I'm going to have this in a components folder and just by itself. Okay. And of course, once we see this, we'll see that we don't have this file structure yet. That's okay. Um, I'll make it right here. So I want a components folder in the source. And in the components folder, I want a game.js. Okay, let's go ahead and set this up. Okay, so now we've got a return statement here. And as always, I never um, initially put data to anything. I'm always a big fan of just literally making a little div box that says hi, just to see this stuff actually rendering out. And can't resolve um, module not found. Components. Slash. This might be a case for something. Okay, so that was just an issue of um, the compiler. I had to restart it. But as you see here, we no longer have just one um, high box here. We've got two. And if you'll notice in the app, we no longer have that initial high there, but rather we're mapping over games and returning a high div box, i.e. this game component for each item in this array. And of course, we can clearly count that there's one and two. So we should expect to see two highs, and we do in fact see two highs. So we're good there. Um, I'm safe to assume that this all works. So now that I actually have this, let's actually have some data to play with, right? So I'm gonna console log, and I'm gonna console log props, just so I can see what I'm working with here. And as you see, we've got two prop values here, one for each item in that game's array. We've got the first index. So we've got a complete game function, a remove game function, and the index. We also have a complete game function, an index, and a remove game. So that's all good. And let's see, each game. Oh. I totally forgot something here, silly me. So like, if you're looking at this game, right, this game component, I'm passing down all this other stuff as props, but I missed the most important thing, and that's the actual item itself. So like, I wanna pass down in props games, but I don't want the whole list. I only want the individual item that I'm working with at the time in the particular props component it is for that item, right? So we've already got this set up where we have the individual item here as game. So I'm going to bring that in there, save that. So that's what we're now passing game down as props called game, right? So we can save this. Okay, so we're much better now. Like as we see, we now have that game component in our props, right? And as you see here, it's a whole list of like cost, ESRB, genre, is completed, name, and system. So that's awesome. We've got a, a good start on this. Let's go ahead and get this data actually rendered out now. Um, we've got our games. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to give this class name of game. We need a style. And if you remember, um, on the toggle, right, we want that text declaration to be up. If the game is completed, right, if the props.game is completed, and what I mean by that is the props, which is this whole object here, and if that props is game, which is this data set here, is completed, I, if, if this is true, then what we're going to do, so if this is true, 
I if prop shop game is completed, then we are going to put a line through as this text decoration. So basically, we'll just put a line through that text. Otherwise, if it's not, I if it's false, we're just going to nothing. We're not going to do anything with the text decoration at all. And we also need a couple p tags here. It's probably not the most semantic. I would maybe have some headers and stuff too, but that's okay. Let's see, I think that'll be enough. So I want a title right. I want that props.game.name. I want the system. And so I want that props.game.system. And I'm not, these values are coming from here, right? Props.game. Dot whatever this value needs to be, whether that's name or system or genre or ESRB or cost, that's where I'm pulling these values at. I'm, okay, all right, so we got rating. And just, let's see, genre. And let's get And so we'll save this, check this out, We've got everything we need. This is awesome. We're totally on our way. I've got less than a minute left on this Zoom, so this is a good stopping point. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my sharing and recording and throw up a new Zoom, and we will reconvene, okay?